is for education and entertainment purposes only. Please consult with your healthcare provider before making any changes to your health plan. Hey beautiful soul, it's Jacqueline here from the Lost Labia Chronicles where I discuss all things lichen sclerosis. So if you have lichen sclerosis and are looking to empower yourself with information, find acceptance and reclaim your life, then please subscribe to this channel and keep on watching. And if you have a friend or loved one with lichen sclerosis and you want to learn more about the physical and mental aspects of living with lichen sclerosis so that you can better support them in their journey, then please subscribe to this channel and share it with them. All right, so in this video, we are going to do kind of like part two of my journey uh, with lichen sclerosis and remission. So in the last video, I spoke about kind of how I accidentally got into remission with lichen sclerosis. And if you haven't watched that video yet, please pause this video and go check that one out first. I will leave a card up here or up here, and I will also leave a link in the description box below so you can check that out, and then you can hop back over here to watch part two. So in today's video, I am going to talk about all of the things that I do to stay in remission. Um, so I'm going to kind of walk through each little kind of category and, you know, talk about why it's beneficial, why it helps for me. Um, of course, this video is not prescriptive. You take what resonates with you and leave what doesn't. That is okay. We are all on our separate journeys and what works for me may not necessarily work for you. And that is okay. Um, as always, if you find the information in this video helpful, please leave me a thumbs up so that I know to keep making these videos and do make sure that you get my free ebook, which you can get at www.lostlabia.com slash ebook. And if you are struggling with painful sex and lichen sclerosis, then you will also want to get my ebook on dilators and lichen sclerosis, which you can get and learn more about at lostlabia.com slash dilator ebook. All right, let's jump into things. So just to start, I want to let you know that at the time that I am filming this, I've been in remission for two years. Yes, in May 2022, which is when I'm filming this, that marks my two year anniversary of being in remission with lichen sclerosis. Ooh, so grateful, so happy. Um, so everything that I'm going to talk in this video is these are all the things that I did in these two years that I'm doing and will continue to do that have helped me, I believe, to stay in remission. So of course, one of the first things that, you know, I just obviously have to talk about is treatment. Um, so as most of you know, I choose to treat with topical corticosteroids. I do use clobetazole, which is an ultra potent topical steroid. Um, and I spoke in my last video about how I wasn't using it optimally and I pointed you in the direction of how to learn how to use your steroids optimally by listening to a podcast by um, Lichen Sclerosis Podcast with Kathy and Dr. Jill Kraft, which you can listen to at ellissupport.net no, ellissupport slash Dr. Jill. So if you want the kind of in-depth explanation on how to use your steroids optimally, that is an absolute must. Um, so definitely go check that out after you're done watching this. But I explained in my last video that I wasn't really applying my steroids optimally. So one was I was applying it daily for far too long. The general protocol in the literature is you use your steroid once daily for the first month, every other day for the second month, and for the third month, you switch into maintenance mode, which is when you apply your steroid two times a week. Now, this is a general protocol and this will not be everybody's trajectory. Some folks need to stay a lot longer on the once daily, especially if you have a more severe or complicated case of lichen sclerosis and others react super well and can kind of zoom right into maintenance. Um, a lot of doctors will tweak that general protocol based on the clinical presentation that they're seeing. So please always listen to your medical, you know, provider when, you know, we're talking about how to apply your medication or how often you should be applying it. And don't think that just because that's the general protocol, that is hard and fast how you need to be applying it. Um, there will be differences, so don't worry about that. However, to apply it daily forever is pretty excessive and not really encouraged is that can actually be harmful to the skin. You can get very irritated and 
just it's not a good time and not a good um, idea. So you just want to work really closely with your doctor um, to get the kind of right dosing schedule. Um, but again, I didn't really know this. So I was just applying it daily for nine months. And then by the time I saw my gynecologist, they were like, no, 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 no. We're going to put you on maintenance. So in the two years that I've been in remission, I have been applying on a maintenance schedule, which is two times a week. And you can kind of break this up however you want. I choose a Monday and Thursday schedule. That's just what works for me. I know other folks will do a Wednesday, Saturday schedule, but some people don't like having to remember their steroid on a weekend. Like they really want the weekend to just, you know, do anything but that. So that's why some people opt for the Monday, Thursday, but that, you know, doesn't work for everyone in their schedule. So you can kind of play around with those dates, but those are the dates that I do and that I stick to. And I do have a video on how to stay consistent with your steroids. Um, and I think that's a really important video and I kind of share how I stay consistent and how I actually made it into a routine that I love and look forward to. So I'm gonna leave a card here, here, or in the description box below. You can check that out after watching this video. So I apply it two times a week and I do apply it in accordance with Dr. With Dr. Jill Crapp. Uh, crap, I do apply it according to her kind of protocol and guidance. So again, that can be found at lssupport.net slash Dr. Jill for how to apply them optimally, but I am applying it in accordance with her directions and I'm doing that twice a week. Now, before I move on, I'd probably be remiss to say, you know, if I didn't explain why I choose to still treat on a maintenance dose. So some folks say to me, okay, well, you're in remission and you have no more symptoms. Why are you still applying your steroid? And my answer is that there's actually good evidence to support the importance of ongoing maintenance treatment in order to maintain remission, to keep inflammation at bay, and to reduce the likelihood of developing vulvar cancer as well as preventing the progression of the disease. Um, the thing with lichen sclerosis is it can progress silently. So oftentimes what happens is the disease, you know, the inflammation is building and growing and all of these changes are happening kind of below the surface and you don't always realize before it's too late and then, you know, you've lost some anatomy or, you know, you'd have a big tear or something like that. So unfortunately there is no cure for lichen sclerosis and at the time that I'm recording this, Topical corticosteroids uh, are the gold standard to kind of keep folks in remission, reduce the likelihood of developing vulvar cancer, keep inflammation at bay, and kind of slow the progression of the disease. So that is why I choose to personally continue to use my steroids, despite the fact that I am in remission and that that also for me means I don't have symptoms. Another important piece of staying in remission for me has been learning about the importance of vulva checks and actually doing them. So a vulva check is essentially what it kind of sounds like. Once a month, you examine your vulva, and this is my, you probably are familiar with my vulva puppet by now from the body agency. Um, so once a month, you will kind of look around and examine your vulva and you're essentially looking for any um, changes to the appearance of the vulva. Now, the thing is like, I never did these before getting lichen sclerosis because I was never raised um, being told that this is something that I should do. I never knew the proper anatomy for my parts. I mean, no joke, like I, <laughs> I remember being like maybe 29, 28 years old at a pub at grad school saying that you pee out of your vagina and oh my lord this person heard me say that and they ripped into me they were like what no you do not pee out of your vagina you pee out of your urethra and how do you not know this and so they took um like a napkin at the bar and they took a pen out of their bag and they drew me a vulva and then they explained the anatomy and how it worked and i was like wow <laughs> i'm like 28 29 years old and learning this for the first time you know, and ironically, like, you know, in grad school, you would think I would know these things. No, because we're not raised with proper sex ed and no one really tells us this. No one really tells us the importance of doing a vulva check, of knowing your anatomy, of knowing what your normal baseline is. All these things are so important 
for vulvar health, but a lot of us, you know, just don't have that information. So if vulva checks is something that is new to you and you want to learn more, I highly encourage you to check out Lichen Sclerosis Support Network. I will leave all of their information and key links in the description box below. Uh, Lichen Sclerosis Support Network is a nonprofit organization um, whose mission is to really empower folks with lichen sclerosis by providing evidence-based information. And one of their programs is the uh, Check Your Vulva program. And this has different different components, and I'm not going to um, say too, too much. I'm just going to say what we've already told the public at this point, but we are creating vulva check, check your vulva kits. So those will come with things like mirrors, got, you know, visual pamphlets for you to follow along with, emollients, um, tons of good stuff to really, you know, do a good vulva check. And with Lichen Sclerosis Support Network, their vulva check program doesn't just focus on the physical. So of course there's a physical component, right? Like you are literally checking your physical vulva. Um, so there is of course the physical component, but checking your vulva can actually be an incredibly emotional process. Um, it can really bring to the surface a lot of feelings, you know, of shame and regret and anger and all of these things. So Lichen Sclerosis Support Network, when they're creating these, check your vulva kits and their check your vulva programs, they're really thinking of also incorporating different pieces to also address the mental health component. So if you want to get your kit, I will leave the sign up link below and just follow Lichen Sclerosis Support Network because they are really pioneering, you know, the importance of kind of checking your vulva and providing you with so many fundamental resources to make this a comfortable process for you. They're really, really, really emphasizing that mental health piece. Okay. So for me, I now do my vulva checks once a month. Um, it takes me maybe three-ish minutes. Now it might take some folks longer. I, I'm a very flexible person, so it doesn't really take me too long to, to kind of set up. I can very easily visualize my vulva by using a, a handheld mirror, but also when you're doing a vulva check, the you know one key piece is to know what your normal is, and then the other thing with lichen sclerosis and you know remission and all of these things is you want to be monitoring for any changes to the vulva. So if you see any new white patches or whiteness, if you see a lesion or a fissure, if you see that there's you know if this is what it looked like before but now there's a lot of fusing and there's a lot more fusing around the clitoris. We want to be mindful of these types of changes. Now, another reason why the vulva checks take me a little bit less amount of time than some folks is I don't have a lot of bits to move around anymore. I'm very flat and um, there's not much going on. So typically a vulva check does, you know, require you to move the labia minora around, move the, you know, the labia majora, feel around for any bumps, anything like that. You know, you really want to get into all of these different crevices and move parts around. But for me, like these parts are just flat and flush and gone. And then this part here, my, I have so much clitoral adhesions and fusing that I can't retract the hood. So I can't, you know, I do the best I can, but I don't really have as much to move around as other people. Um, so that's why maybe it takes me a little less time because I don't have any many, uh, as many cracks and crevices to kind of check through. But why this is important is because if I were to see any change that I thought, you know, Ooh, that wasn't there last month. And one of the ways in which I know that it wasn't there last month is when I do my vulva checks, I also take a photo so that I can actually go back because look, I mean, the best of us, our memory is still not completely reliable, but me, no, my memory, there's no way I'm remembering exactly what I looked like last month. There's no way. So pictures help me kind of have something to compare against. Now let's say I start seeing like a lesion or, you know, some whiteness around here. Well, that's a sign that, you know, I'm not probably not in remission anymore because that's active like in sclerosis. And if I saw anything, even if it wasn't like an active, clear active lichen sclerosis, any kind of change, let's say there's like a bruise or something, I would call my doctor and have them give me a clinical examination to make sure that everything is okay and that I'm doing the best that I can to kind of 
stay where I'm at. So for me, I think the vulva checks are also really important to just make sure that things are looking and staying good down there because I don't get to see my gynecologist once a month. Um, you know, typically you're seeing them every six months to a year. Don't take that as like an absolute. That time, you know, will kind of depend on the country that you live in and your gynecologist or your dermatologist or your doctor proper. But you're probably not going to see them every month. So for me, it's really helpful to kind of keep track of things and kind of know where I stand so that I can be super proactive and stay on top of things so that things don't progress to a point where, you know, things get really bad. In my last video, I spoke about the fact that I went to sex therapy after being diagnosed with lichen sclerosis to work on uh, like a ton of different issues that I had, you know, fear and anxiety were probably very high on that list. Shame and grief were right below it. Um, body dysmorphia and disgust with my vulva, um, sexual trauma, you know, just all of these issues that were kind of bound up in this lichen sclerosis and sex bubble, um, I sought support for. And I think it's important to say that I am still to this day in, I see my sex therapist, I'm still in therapy. And I think it's really important because I think Sometimes we think that this is a temporary thing that, okay, I'll go to like six sessions and then that's it. But the truth is, is that these issues take a really long time to, to kind of work on. And, and for me, at least, it's important that I don't rush that process. And so, you know, as you heal some things, sometimes other things start to surface or, you know, there's new things that I want to talk about. So, um, you, you know, I, I'm finally at a place where I'm able to have sex again. So now our conversations about sex look different, but they're still, you know, important conversations about sex and intimacy and like and sclerosis. And, you know, then, then there are fears like, oh, will, you know, this knock me out of remission and how do I work with these fears? And so to this day, I still work with her on some of these issues and anything, anytime something new kind of resurfaces, I have a professional resource that is able to support and guide me and walk me through these. So I do think that, you know, staying in and being committed to sex therapy and committed to all of the work that takes place outside of those therapy sessions has been incredibly healing and helpful to kind of manage, you know, my mental health um, with respect to lichen sclerosis. And again, that's just really important because if your mental health is bad, it's really hard to to heal. Um, you know, medication is great. Medication has worked incredibly well for me, but I have no illusions that, you know, if I just applied clobetasol, but I wasn't going to therapy and I didn't do pelvic floor physio and I didn't work on my nervous system and all these other things, you know, that medication could only take me so far. So for me, you know, it's really a holistic mind body kind of approach to healing and staying in remission. And so having a resource that I can go to to talk through these issues in a healthy, safe way versus spiraling in my head and then kind of slowly slipping into old habits, I kind of avoid that. So that has been incredibly helpful for my you know remission journey. And I will say that while I am still in sex therapy, I don't go as frequently as I did in the beginning. We you know see each other maybe once every month or two months, depending on how I'm going. But I still see her and I know that I have a resource to go to if something comes up. And I think that's really important and provides me with a lot of comfort and kind of stability in where I'm at. Another thing that I do to stay in remission is I actively work on keeping my pelvic floor, my pelvis happy and healthy. Now this is incredibly important and I think it's something that we don't tend to discuss as much with lichen sclerosis. We tend to kind of focus on the vulva, but at the end of the day, the vulva is connected to the vagina, which is connected to the pelvic floor muscles. You know, it's, it's all really connected and they're all in very close proximity. And when there's something off with one, we often get this domino effect such that if you have pelvic floor dysfunction, that can actually lead to vaginal pain and vulvar pain. If there is prolonged vulvar pain or trauma to the vulva, then you can start getting pelvic floor dysfunction and pelvic floor pain. So they're actually very intimately connected. And for me, a fundamental piece of keeping my lichen sclerosis in remission is also doing the work to keep my pelvic floor and my pelvis happy and healthy. So 
let's talk about what I do to keep my pelvis happy. So one thing that I do is, of course, pelvic floor physical therapy, and I use all of the chips and tricks and techniques that I've learned over the years to kind of make sure that my pelvic floor is nice and relaxed, to make sure that I'm breathing into the area, that I'm encouraging, you know, blood flow and all of that good stuff. So I do a lot of those techniques. Um, for me, a lot of that is, you know, reverse Kegels, um, body scan meditations, working with dilators, a bunch of things like that, you know, a lot of visualization stuff, a lot of different breathing techniques. And I practice these and I, I don't, I'd be lying to you if I said I practice every single one of these every single day. I don't. But what I do try to do is once a day, even just taking five minutes or even two minutes some morning to focus and give my pelvis some love. So on really busy days, that might look like at the end of the day when I'm in bed, I just practice some pelvic floor breathing. Two minutes and that's it. But I did something kind for my pelvis that day. And these little things, they add up. They really do make a big difference. So I don't want you to listen to this and think that this is so unreasonable because you can't see a sex therapist every week and you can't do, you know, an hour of pelvic floor kind of exercise and work every single day. You don't need to do that. It doesn't, it's not, you know, one extreme or the other. It's about, you know, doing what you can stick to and doing what works for you, your body and your life schedule. Um, so for me, it's about taking time a little bit of time or a little bit more time every single day to do a little something to encourage a happy and healthy pelvic floor. Another thing that I do is I joined a membership, a pelvic floor health yoga membership by Penny. Um, and Penny is actually a fellow LS warrior herself, and she has pelvic pain and lichen sclerosis. And she's also a yoga teacher. And so she put together this amazing Hatha inspired pelvic floor focused yoga membership so that other folks with pelvic floor pain and lichen sclerosis can help you know and actively take steps to healing their lichen sclerosis and their pelvic pain so this membership there is like so much involved in this membership um there is eft which is um tapping um, and I'm going to do a video on that and I'm going to try and uh, I, I'm saying this now and I haven't even spoken to her but I'm going to try and get Penny to kind of come on and kind of collab and have us talk about EFT um, but it is a strategy or a technique that is used to regulate and manage pain physical pain or stress physical or mental stress um, and I actually heard about this technique in pain in a pain you know counseling program that I was actually a part of for almost a year at one of the main hospitals where I live and we did a whole pain education module and then pain therapy and we did all these different things and um, I was in groups with folks that really lived with severe chronic pain and a lot of people swore by this tapping technique that they would do every single day. Now it's a lot more than just tapping so definitely if you don't know what I'm talking about check you know check out penny's membership or reach out to penny um and i can talk to you a little bit more in detail about it as well as my experience um i am currently starting like a 30-day dedication to doing eft myself because back then when everyone was telling me like oh yeah like the eft technique really helps me manage my pain and my stress I did it like once or twice and I felt nothing. I was like, okay, I feel the exact same. Like this does not work for me and I never did it again. But it's something that just kept coming up. It was almost like the universe was kind of nudging me slowly to like give it another go. And the, the thing is like uh, everything that I've ever seen results from has taken a lot of consistency and time. So I'm an avid yoga practicer. Even before joining the membership, I love yoga. But it took me a really long time to kind of sink into the yoga practice and really start reaping the benefits of yoga um anything you know working out i'm an avid weightlifter same thing probably took you know six months to really start seeing some really key changes in my body and my strength so you know it's like i know that these types of things aren't like an instant fix but nonetheless i just kind of like gave up on it but when penny got her certification and added that into the membership i was like okay 
I am going to commit to doing this once a day for 30 days and I'm going to update Instagram every day to kind of keep myself and hold myself accountable and then I'm going to share my experience with, you know, have I seen any improvements or anything like that. So I really want to actually commit to this long enough to kind of start to see um, some shifts. So that's a part of the pelvic floor yoga membership. And then there are also um, on demand once you know a week, sometimes she does too, um, live pelvic floor yoga classes. And you're not just gonna be like moving through flows and downward dogs and all of this. Pelvic floor yoga is very distinct. It is very gentle and slow. It is very accessible for most people. Penny is very good at cueing different modifications for different bodily needs so that's very important it is very like soothing and pelvic floor focused you know on opening things up and creating space and breathing in and getting blood flow to that area all these things that are fundamental for health so she does a live class once a week which you can join with different people and you can keep your camera off if you are shy no problems there or if you're like me and it's summer and you like to do them naked you can do that too um, and then she has a whole backlog of just, you know, classes that she's taught, different pelvic floor poses. Um, she also has pelvic floor meditations. Um, so meditations to kind of really connect with your pelvic floor and release it. She has some amazing just, you know, kind of mind body meditation. She has a whole, you know, little mini series on how to breathe into your pelvic floor. And these are great because some of these are things that you can practice, you know, once a day, you know, it doesn't take a big time commitment. These are things that you can, you can just practice the pelvic floor breathing in the morning, or you don't have to do it like a full 45 minute class. She also just has like a section where there's like different pelvic floor poses. So you can just do one pose a day and you just stay in that pose for a couple minutes, breathe into the pelvic floor and that's it. You're done. Um, so if you are interested in the pelvic floor membership and want to join Penny and I, I do have a discount code and an affiliate link if you are interested. So I will leave that linked in the description box below. All you have to do is click that link and then use my code Jacqueline for 30% off of your first month. So definitely take advantage of that. It is so, so, so worth it. And it is so very underrated and important to pay attention to your pelvic floor even if you don't think there's you know you think your pelvic floor is wrong is fine it can probably use some you know some tlc some tender loving care down there so i will leave that for you to check out but these are all things that i do and i kind of practice daily i take bits and pieces and you know put those kind of together to kind of you know just make sure that i'm giving my pelvis some attention and keeping it happy and healthy Another thing that I do that I think, you know, kind of helps me stay in remission is I still work with dilators. Um, now I have videos on my dilator journey and I have that all over my blog and I have an ebook on how to work with dilators if you struggle with painful sex and if you have lichen sclerosis. So definitely be sure to check that out. I will leave all of those links in the description box below. Um, and if you've been following my journey, you know that I am now able to have pain-free, pleasurable sex without any tearing or burning or stinging or any of the issues that I used to experience. Um, and that said, I still do use my dilators on maintenance sometimes. And what that kind of means is I personally choose, I was not told that I had to, this was not in any book or any literature, but what I chose to do was to use them maybe once or twice a week, um, just to kind of it, it helps me in two ways, okay? So it helps me mentally because mentally I feel like, okay, things are good down there. I'm keeping space. Things are open. Things are good. And that just makes me more confident when I go to have physical penetrative sex. It just, I don't know. It's just like a kind of mind thing. It just, it works for me, okay? If that doesn't work for you or you don't need to do that, amen, do what works for you. But that helps for me. And then on the physical part, you know, there is, you know, there are benefits to using dilators that don't necessarily involve um, penetrative sex. For example, using dilators can help increase blood flow to the area. And we know that increased blood flow is in super important for healthy tissue and for healing, right? If you're trying to heal a wound, you really want to encourage good blood flow getting to that area. But with lichen sclerosis, the skin actually, you know, the skin below the surface, we have seven layers of, 
of skin and the layers below these start to thicken and harden which makes it harder for blood flow to get to that area so the way that i see it is by encouraging blood flow i'm kind of aiding that healing process even more so i have my clobetazol that's keeping the inflammation down that's keeping the skin not thick which is what we want we want it to be you know elastic and mobile and healthy um so i'm attacking that front from with the clobetazol angle but then with the other angle i'm using things like dilators and vibrators to kind of encourage more blood flow to that area so i see it you know I'm a really a big proponent of using all the tools that you possibly can in order to heal. Um, so that's also why I kind of continue to use them. And when I use them, I literally like sit there or lie there and I actually like imagine in my head the blood flow rushing to that area. And like, you know, I picture these like this healing kind of crystal like light that is just kind of, you know, encouraging growth and healing and healthiness and all of these things you know and it's just something that i find very helpful and supportive to you know my remission journey and to staying in remission by keeping the vulvar tissues you know nice and healthy down there in addition to the clobetasol so that is another thing that i do to help me stay in remission another thing that i do to stay in remission and i'm kind of laughing because i feel like this video is just like another thing another thing another thing but i swear we're almost done with the another things we're almost there thank you for sticking with me i appreciate you um but yeah so a, another thing that i do to kind of stay in remission or help stay in remission is i do a lot of work to you know with meditation and mindfulness and a lot of work on regulating my nervous system and keeping things kind of balanced and stable and calm encouraging that parasympathetic nervous system to kind of kick in online instead of just being in that hypersympathetic charged state which can cause a lot of problems when you're chronically in that state um, and i'm actually going to be hosting a workshop on stress reduction and activating the vagus nerve and using the vagus nerve to your advantage for you know when working with trying to heal your lichen sclerosis so definitely be sure to check that out. I will leave a link in the description box below for where you can sign up. I'm gonna be hosting a couple of workshops on this topic in the summer and fall of 2022. Um, so that's definitely gonna be um, very crucial. Of course, just disclaimer, I'm not saying that this is the only thing that you should be doing, but it, this is these are all strategies and techniques that I think are really fundamental and part of that kind of holistic mind-body picture of healing and managing your lichen sclerosis so all of these tips and tricks that i'm going to be talking about in this workshop these are things that i implement throughout my week as well and again like i was saying earlier like i work a full-time job i do the Las labia chronicles i volunteer on the board for lichen sclerosis support network i'm on a ls research project like i do a lot so don't think that I sit here and have like two hours, three hours a day to dedicate to all of this. I don't, I'm incredibly busy. So if you are too, I hear that. You do not have to spend that long, but these are all little things that you can start implementing throughout your days to start slowly bringing down some of that charge and allowing your body to go into that parasympathetic, calming, relaxation state because it's that state that allows for healing. We can't really heal when we are in this hyper chronic tense, you know, um, state. Our bodies just aren't ready for healing. So we kind of have to do some of that work to get us to a place where those physical, you know, treatments and stuff can actually start to work. So in my mind, they all, all these things kind of fit together in this, you know, holistic mind body kind of approach to health. And by me practicing these every day, I really have seen a huge difference, you know, from when I first got diagnosed to now. I'm in a very good, you know, mental health state with everything. I have found acceptance. I am living my best life. In fact, my life is better now with lichen sclerosis because I've learned so much about it and because getting lichen sclerosis kind of forced me to I start to pay attention to myself and to give myself time because I'm worthy of that. And so these are all things that, you know, have been really healing for me in order to stay in remission. Another thing that I do to help me stay in remission is I do use a emollient. 
Now I have a couple videos on why you know emollients are so important and so underrated when it comes to lichen sclerosis. I will leave that linked in the description box below and I will also leave a card up there and I have an emollient um, kind of review video which I'm gonna film a second because I've um, tried quite a few more emollients since then. So I will do another mini review um, video if there is enough interest for that. Um, but an emollient is basically uh, like a moisturizer for your vulva. Um, and personally, you know, I have a few that I like. Um, coconut oil is probably always going to be my favorite just because it works well for me and my body, but also because it's so cheap and so accessible. Um, it just... It, for me, it makes sense. Um, I am not at a place where I can spend an exorbitant amount of money on products. So if I find one that works wonderfully and is cheap, then that's the option that I'm going to go because I just don't have the finances to, you know, experiment with some of the higher budget ones. So definitely, um, that's something that I need to be mindful of. Um, I also really like Clio by Demiva. I also like Rescue Balm, although that one is more of a barrier cream, but I do like that one as well. And I share my other favorites in my product review video, but I do apply an emollient every day. Um, how often I apply really just depends on my activity level and how I feel physically. So typically I'll apply it once or twice a day, but on days that I'm either A, more active, so if I'm going to work out at a gym, if I'm going on a hike, I'll typically apply probably more like three to five times, or if I'm just experiencing like a lot of dryness down there, like I just feel drier, um, then I will add that on. And that's something that's been really helpful for me just to help me feel really good. Um, my vulvar tissue just feels and looks a lot better when I'm using an emollient. Um, so that is another thing that I do to stay in remission. Okay, so before I wrap up this video, I do wanna have a little caveat section here because there are some things that I need to say about remission that are incredibly important and you know the first is that there is currently at the time that I'm filming this no cure for lichen sclerosis so that means that while you can get into remission you are not cured so for me it's important that I do these continual things such as use my clebatazole and then implement all of these mind-body techniques to kind of work on my overall health um, in order to stay in remission. But I have no illusions that in the future at any time I can come out of remission um, because there is no cure. So treating with clebatazole and doing all this mind-body work is no guarantee that I will never have a flare again or that this won't resurface again. And this is something that I, you know, I feel very grounded in. I'm very much aware of the reality of what it means to be in remission and what it means to have lichen sclerosis right now. And I know that, you know, in two years from now, I could be in a flare or I could have, you know, you know, I might not be in remission anymore. Um, and so I think, you know, there's a lot of work that needs to be done there. And that's something that, you know, you can maybe get support with, with the counselor to kind of work through all of the emotions on that because while I'm very accepting of this now, um, this was harder for me to wrap my head around earlier. So I just wanna say that, you know, part of the reason that I do all of these things is because I know that there is no cure and I know that it's very important to keep kind of working on treating and doing these mind-body techniques so that, you know, I can hopefully stay in remission, but if not, I'll deal with that when it comes. And I think, you know, another big difference now is that I feel a lot more empowered and prepared to deal with this if that happens because now I have so much more knowledge about this disease, I have so much more resources and tools so that if I ever do get kicked out of remission, I know my plan to get back into remission. I know what I'm going to do for my symptoms to control, you know, all of those, you know, the itch and the pain and whatever. I feel more prepared to deal with that now. So I feel very grounded in my concept of remission and what that means for me and my future. And I think that I've come to a very kind of healthy, realistic conceptualization of what this means for me. Um, so I think that is something that I really wanted to stress um, that, you know, again, there is no cure. And these are things that we want to kind of be constantly working on. And then another caveat that I wanted to mention, and I did mention this at the beginning of this video, but I just want to reiterate it because it's super important 
because you know I'm also in a lot of these LS communities and I'll hear somebody say you know coconut oil works well for me and then you know there'll be a bunch of people saying like no coconut oil is terrible don't use it da 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 and the thing is is what works for one person isn't going to work for everyone and so it is very possible that you know one of the things that I do to help me stay in remission is not you know helpful for you and and that's okay you don't have to follow verbatim every single step of you know how i stay in remission i'm just sharing this with you in the hopes that you can pick out something that is helpful and supportive for you in your journey but please do just that take what resonates take what feels supportive and safe for you and just disregard what doesn't feel safe or supportive for you um, maybe you're not ready to start trying sex therapy that's okay that's okay do something else that works for you and feels supportive to you and your body. And then finally, um, you know, another thing that I kind of wanted to add, but was kind of hesitant to add was, you know, diet and just kind of general lifestyle stuff. Um, I do take that very seriously as well. You know, I try to spend a lot of time, at least a couple times a week in nature with my feet in the grass. or we have a lot of like little nature walk trails and I, try and do those i try and make sure that you know i get some sun um but with spf of course i you know i exercise i work out at the gym i weight lift i walk daily um and you know diet i know this is a very controversial topic with respect to lichen sclerosis right now and one that i don't touch because that is not my area at all um i don't follow any of the conventional lichen sclerosis diet so i don't do a low oxalate, I don't do AIP, I don't do like a carnivore, I don't do intermittent fasting, I don't kind of follow those traditional diets that are kind of um, targeted or marketed towards lichen sclerosis. I don't really do any of those, but you know, I, I eat in a way that feels nourishing and good for, for me and my body. Um, so I just wanted to also add that as a little caveat of something in there that I'm also mindful of and you know, that I do to help just maintain overall health and, and kind of wellness. So I did just want to close with a couple, or I guess that was three, so a few caveats. Um, so if you've been watching up until this point, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Please share and let me know, you know, are you in remission? Have you heard of remission? What do you do to stay in remission? Because this, this isn't all of the things that you can do to stay in remission. Um, there are other things. So, you know, we learn by, by sharing, you know, there's a lot of wisdom in lived experience. So it is important. Even if you think it's not, it is important. So please share that in the comments below so that other people can learn, um, from you. All right, everybody, that is it for this one. Thank you so much. I will catch you in the next one.